In this video, Shabab, we are going to talk about some common signals in engineering, some common signals that we are going to use throughout our course and throughout all the courses in uh, electrical engineering or uh, in, in some other branches of engineering. Uh, the most important signal and the signal that we see many, many times in many, many applications is the exponential signal. Why is that? Because many systems, many of our systems, whether in electrical engineering or mechanical engineering or any other branch of engineering, we can represent them, especially for continuous time systems, we can represent them using differential equations with constant coefficients. And when we represent these systems using ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients, you will find that the solution contains an exponential function. For example, let me, let me remind you of uh, a system that you studied in the uh, circuit analysis, which uh, was uh, just when you switch a circuit and the remaining is only a resistor and an inductor, you switch it off. For example, if imagine that there was a switch here and you switch it off, you open the switch. So the remaining system will be only a resistor and an inductor. You used to get the equation for the current when you solve this system, you used to get the equation for the current to be of the form I of zero. Okay, assuming that zero is the instant when you switch the switch uh, off. I of zero used to get an equation I of t equals I of zero exponential minus t over tau, right? Where tau was called the time constant and uh, it was equal to L over R, right? So we used to get an equation of this form. Why or where did you get an equation like this? From solving the differential equation of this system. So the exponential function is very, very important function. We have to know all the different cases of uh, the exponential function and, uh, and uh, all the important relations because we will see it many, many times. The first equation about exponential function is called the Euler's identity. The first equation that we should know is called the Euler's identity. Euler's identity it relates the exponential functions, the complex exponential functions, to the sine and the cosine. So the Euler's identity it says that exponential j theta, which is a complex number that has magnitude one and angle theta, right? This is a complex number with magnitude one. The magnitude is usually written here, and the angle is written here. This is a complex number with angle theta. It says that. Exponential j theta can be written as cosine theta plus j. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's cosine theta plus j sine theta. And exponential minus j theta, it's cosine theta minus j sine theta. So this is called Euler's identity. From Euler's identity, we can also reverse it and get that expression for the cosine theta in terms of the exponential. So we can write cosine theta. Well, if you add these two equations, the sine is going to cancel, and you'll find that the cosine, and you'll find that the cosine can be written as exponential g theta plus exponential minus g theta over two, and the sine theta. We can obtain it by subtracting these two equations uh, and you can find that sine theta can be written as exponential theta minus exponential minus j theta over j2 so these uh, relations, this set of relations uh, it relates the exponential function the complex exponential function to the sine and cosine this is, that's why it's very important because we use the sine and cosine uh, a lot and we use the exponential a lot that's why it's, uh, these relations are important to move between the two important functions okay so these are uh, regarding Euler's identity let's study the different cases for the exponential function in general the exponential function in general the exponential function can be written as an exponential function can be written as some constant c exponential, another constant multiplied by t. These constants can be real or can be complex. 
Let's take the first case, case one, on both of them. Case one, let's take case one, both C and A are real. So if both C and A are real, okay, then you can uh, plot this exponential function like this. If A is positive, if A is greater than zero, really, but greater than zero, of course, when t equals zero, at t equals zero, x of t will be c, exponential zero to be c. So at t equals zero, the function will be c, will be equal to c. If A is greater than zero, you find that the function is increasing with time, increasing exponentially with time. If A is less than zero, you will find that again at t equals zero the function is c here and if a is less than zero the function is going to be decreasing exponentially so this is how the exponential function looks like when c is real a is greater than zero real and greater than zero here when c is real a is real and less than zero right this is called the uh, over than case and over the signals when the signals are damping exponentially towards zero. So in this case, usually they call it over then over then means that the signal is dying quickly. Okay, so this is the first case for the exponential function. Second important case and the most general case when Uh, in the textbook, it's called case 3, but uh, it includes case 2 and case 3. So here, case 2 and case 3 together can be merged together when C and A, both of them are complex. In this case, if uh, both C and A are complex, let's, uh, for example, say that C will be uh, A exponential J pi. This is a complex number and A can be written as sigma plus J omega. So this is complex, this is complex. In this case, the exponential function or X of T can be written as C, which is exponential A exponential J phi multiplied by exponential sigma plus J omega multiplied by T. We can Manipulate a little bit here, and we can write it as a exponential sigma t multiplied by exponential j omega j omega t plus phi. So we can write the exponential function like this. The exponential here, exponential j something, exponential j something using Euler's identity can be written as cosine. The angle plus j sine the angle. So we can write this as a exponential sigma t multiplied by cosine omega t plus phi plus j sine omega t plus phi. Fine, uh, this equation, this equation contains a real part and imaginary part. It contains a real part A exponential sigma t cosine, okay? And the imaginary part is A exponential sigma t sine. The real part alone, it's real. And the imaginary part alone, it's real, right? But when we add them using the J, uh, it will be, it will give us a complex function. This is a complex function. If we focus on the real part, if we focus on the real part and try to plot it for uh, several cases, the real part is a exponential sigma t multiplied by cosine. So let's focus on the real part. Let's take the real part, which is sometimes they write it as real of x of t. You write it like this, it will be exponential sigma t cosine omega t plus phi. If we want to plot this, you will find that it's a cosine function, it's a cosine function, but its amplitude is changing exponentially. Either the amplitude of the cosine, it's not constant, it's either 
decreasing or increasing, or it's constant if sigma equals zero. Yani let's take back three cases. When sigma equals zero, sigma equals zero means what, Yashar? Sure? Means that from the beginning, A was just imaginary. If sigma equals zero, this means that A was always not imaginary only, right? And this is case number two in the textbook. That's why I said that we are going to study case two and case three together. If sigma equals zero, this means that A is imaginary. And in this case, our signal will be just cosine wave. Just a cosine wave, right? Our real part will be a cosine wave. This is, or this signal, this is the real part of x of t. Uh, we say that this signal is undamped. Why do we say that this signal is undamped? Because the amplitude doesn't decrease, right? Here, the amplitude is decreasing. That's why we called it overdamped. Here, the amplitude of the cosine wave doesn't uh, uh, <coughs> decrease, right? That's why we call it undamped. And in some other textbooks, they call it critically damped. This case in the appears a lot practically in something called the oscillators that you are going to study in the second course of electronics in the electrical engineering department here. You are going to study something called the oscillators, which is used to generate cosine waves and sine waves using LC circuits. So uh, this appears in something called oscillators using LC circuits. Only inductors and capacitors, they use it to generate, uh, oscillate sine waves or cosine waves and generate them to supply the circuit. Okay? So it has a practical application. They uh, choose sigma or they design the circuit so that sigma equals zero, there is no damping, so that they have an oscillation or change of energy between the inductors and capacitors. We will study this in detail in the second course of electronics. Okay? If sigma is greater than zero, sigma is greater than zero, then it's the cosine wave, its magnitude is going to be increasing, right? So if sigma is greater than zero, the magnitude of the cosine wave is going to be increasing something like this. This is how the signal will look like. Okay? If sigma is less than zero, it's negative. If sigma is negative, then the real part of x of t uh, it's a cosine wave with decreasing amplitude. Uh, so it will look like this. The magnitude of the cosine is decreasing, and this is what we call underdamped signal. This is in practical applications in control or in circuits, they call it under then Under then means that it is then. But because of these oscillations, it's not over them. It's not. It's them. But slowly, huh? it goes down slowly. Huh? So it goes down and then up, down, up, and with time, huh? on average, the magnitude is going down. So it's them, but uh, with a slow rate. That's why they call it under them. Here it goes down quickly. That's why they call it over them. Here it doesn't go down. That's why they call it under signal. Okay. So these are the different cases for exponential functions. In the next, in the next, uh, in the next uh, video, inshallah, we are going to discuss some other important functions called the singularity functions uh, that are very useful to us. Inshallah. Okay, let me see if there is anything. Uh, and that's it. Okay, so. The underband, by the way, appears in circuits where we have our LC components, resistance, uh, inductance, capacitance. The overdamp here, it appears in either RL or RC circuits. This is just uh, an additional information. So RL or RC circuits, you get overdamp. RLC circuits, usually you get this underband. And LC circuits, you get the critically damped. 
and that's it see you in the next video